temperate grasslands temperate grasslands um, originally were these huge vast areas of unbroken grassland where you have the big skies and uh, they were often referred to as prairies or plains um, a sea of grass uh, they even when they were going across North America uh, they would call the little covered wagons they would call those um, prairie schooners because uh, it's just like you're going across a sea of grass this particular picture shows you North America's only antelope and that is the pronghorn antelope uh, on the, the grasslands uh, feeding that would be a short grass prairie in the West They're similar to tropical savanna, but they're cooler, so they actually have a winter, so they get a cold season. Whenever you see the word temperate, you know you're going to be dealing with some sort of a cold season. So, so temperate refers to the fact that we're not tropical anymore. We are further north and south dealing with a colder season. Um, North America, we call them uh, prairies in Russia they're called the steppe in Hungary the huge grasslands in the middle of Hungary are called the pustas in South America it's called the pampas in Africa and South Africa so when you get right down into South Africa you start to go from a tropical grassland to a temperate grassland it's called the veldt It's a very successful biome, very widespread distribution. This biome is relatively recent. There were certainly not uh, temperate grasslands around in the time of the dinosaurs. Annual rainfall, 300 to 1,000 millimeters. So that's uh, 30 centimeters to a meter. They experience a periodic drought, which will limit how many trees will grow in the temperate grassland. The soils are amazing. The soils are extremely nutrient rich and very deep. They're thoroughly dominated by herbaceous vegetation. So vegetation that, that uh, dies back to the soil every winter. Um, so this is going to be your grasses and forbs. And there are herds of large roaming ungulates. So you have hoofed animals. Um, originally in the North American grasslands, those herds were millions of bison. Uh, we replaced them with cattle and didn't allow them to roam anymore. This was the original uh, large herds, uh, which had a huge impact on the grasslands. Um, so they were feeding on the, the grasses and the forbs. They were rolling on it, wallowing in it, uh, spreading seeds. Uh, so they had uh, these vast uh, migratory paths that they would take. The temperate grasslands at one time covered uh, about 42% of the world land surface. So remember we talked about how the deserts uh, covered 20%. Temperate grasslands once covered 42%. Um, however, a lot of that has been converted to agricultural land. And you can see the little map in the corner shows the extent of the temperate grasslands, uh, the major parts of the temperate grasslands in North America much of which is obviously cultivated. They have these excellent deep soils. So uh, they produce um, a lot of plant material that dies back in the fall. And then the uh, soil organisms will reincorporate all of those nutrients down into the soil. And you have excellent soils, very rich soil layer. Unfortunately, the diversity is lost. Uh, we have replaced it with monocultures of one thing that you grow over acres and acres and acres where once there were thousands of different species. When we look at the global distribution of temperate grasslands, we have moved further north and south from the equator. Uh, and we can see that uh, these are temperate, which means that they do have a winter. So we have periods where the average temperatures um, in the winter time are below freezing. Uh, over here in uh, Manhattan, Kansas, which is uh, got this uh, three to four month winter season 
and then the temperatures warm up in the summertime. Same thing in Russia. You've got this uh, relatively long winter season where uh, any precipitation in those seasons is going to be in, in the form of snow. And in China, the same thing. You've got this winter season as well. And then you have the, the rains tend to be a little bit seasonal, um, more falling in the summer than in the winter time. Uh, and these uh, rains, when it starts to get warm, tend to be accompanied with thunderstorms. So you tend to have uh, the thunderstorms coming uh, in the spring, which will start fires where burning off all the uh, all the dead grasses that had built up over the winter time. So you'll get a lot of thunderstorms there. And uh, here you can see uh, in some cases your, your precipitation is not adequate, adequate enough and you end up with uh, a drought period. So there's very high rates of evaporation. There's periodic droughts. Rainfall um, is greater than that of the, the desert. It's, uh, it's 25 to 75 centimeters a year, whereas the desert is under 25 centimeters a year. But uh, the, the uh, rainfall is not strong enough for supporting forests, but definitely higher than you find in a uh, grasses can be sod forming, like your lawn grasses, where it sends out little uh, tillers uh, side by side. So Kentucky bluegrass is a sod forming grass where you get this mass of, of uh, roots holding it all together. Uh, you also get these bunchy bunch grasses where they, they are spreading out of one central core area. So in the tall grass prairie, the bunch grasses, the major bunch grasses are big blue stem and little blue stem. The switch grass. The temperate grasslands um, have periodic fires, which are important for um, reducing the amount of litter on the soil surface so the plants can grow and it eliminates invading or incoming woody growth. So you're not going to get uh, taken over with shrubs or trees because of the periodic natural fires. The animal life, just like the top, tropical grasslands, is dominated by grazing species and burrowing species. So here we can see in North America, we've got the uh, bison and we've got the, the prairie dogs.